Welcome to Texans on Tap, episode 13. I'm Brandon Strange alongside Charlie Palillo and Josh Jordan. Follow them on X at Palillo at Josh Jordan 975. Jack Brame is our producer. You can support this channel by hitting like and subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. And if you prefer listening to your podcast, our episodes are all available on your favorite podcast app. And give us a five star rating while you're there. Gents, the Texans lose a game that on paper should have been an easy win and was there for the taking all game. But games aren't played on paper, and the Texans' campaign to turn around their reputation suffers a massive setback with what some fans and media are calling the worst loss of the season. It was a battle of Stroud versus Young, but both offenses were pretty lackluster, for being honest, with Young edging out Stroud, just doing enough to get the job done. Uh, first, Charlie, let's start with you. What did you see from the offense on Sunday, and does a performance uh, like this where the team only scores 13 points to an abysmal Panthers team with an extra week of preparation. What, what does that do? Uh, I guess um, from a, uh, you know, how do you reassess this team? And then also just give me your general thoughts on the offense. Well, to sum it up in one word, I'm not even sure if it's a word. Blah! Uh, that was pretty gross. Uh, both way, both ways, as you referenced, neither team topping 230 yards in total offense, you know, it wasn't the 85 Bears against the Steel Curtain Steelers that these defenses are awesome. Though both teams' defenses are better than their offenses, at least in the Texans' case to this point in the season. Uh, Springsteen song, right? Uh, one step forward, two steps back. That felt like eight steps back. I mean, Carolina was the only winless team in the NFL. They'd been destroyed in their two prior games, giving up 42 points in each of them. Granted, as we referenced last week, Okay, that was against the Lions, a really good offense. The Dolphins, the best offense in the NFL. But the Texans were putrid. And it would be one thing, and bad enough, if you just sucked rotten eggs the entire game. But they go 17 plays, 92 yards, a magnificent drive to take a 7 nothing lead. And then the rest of the half, bleh, four possessions total. 11 yards, two, three and outs, a four play possession, a five play possession, right? One drive minus 13 yards on that possession. So it was largely a horror show. The second half to take the lead, a really good long drive, 12 plays, 75 yards. The rest of the way, basically nothing. And we'll get into the more parsing breakdown as we go. But the running game again, Damian Pierce, another sub four yards per carry game. Uh, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, neither averaging even, what, eight yards per catch in the game. Uh, Stroud, just 140 yards passing. They only had 58 snaps offensively, and I guess that was the silver lining because another 10, 20 snaps might have been difficult to watch. <laughs> yeah, when I look at the offense, I think part of these struggles go back to the Saints game. Remember, they only scored three points in the second half of that Saints game. And then they come out against the Panthers, no points in the first quarter. Also, fourth quarter, no points against the Panthers. So this inconsistency on offense, is it, it's been here for a while, but it, it just looked really bad against the Panthers. The other thing I point out, the bye week, Bobby Slowick, D'Amico, they, well, we'll just stick with the offense first. Way too much leaning on a run when it's not that good. And that few of attempts for C.J. Stroud, you're not going to win games running the ball. You're just not good at it. My other big takeaway, Titus Howard needs to go back to playing tackle. He is just not a very good guard. They're trying to pull him in situations. He's not you know, blocking the right guy. It looks bad, and they have other options. I know one of their centers went down, but Juice Scruggs should be back soon. Dieter came in to replace him. They also have Broker. So I think they need to look at one of these other options to take care of guard and center, put Titus Howard back out at tackle. He's just better there. He's even better at left tackle than he is at left guard. So they got to fix that right away. Uh, Damian Pierce and, and Singletary, their two biggest runs were almost blown up in the backfield. Their, their two biggest plays where I think Pierce got like 16 yards. They're having to shake guys in the backfield. So I just, Bobby Slowick really disappointed me. I don't think we're going to have to worry about him getting poached this year to be a head coach somewhere else. I know it's, you know, a small sample size, but there's still a lot of, a lot of learning and evolving to do with this offense. Yeah, and, and the offensive line, uh, rather disappointing. It's better than we've but seen what we've seen recently. 
But if you go from horror show to below average, it doesn't mean you're good. And this isn't a good offensive line that just dictates the game at the line of scrimmage, right? That C.J. Stroud's sack numbers have been low since the first two games where he was, what, sacked 11 times total? Uh, that's a positive sign. But they obviously are unable to just say, we're going to line up, run the ball, stop us, without the other team saying, okay, we'll stop you. Uh, so there's still a couple of pieces shy in talent. Uh, utterly agree with, with Josh that Howard's a right tackle and with his big extension needs to be there and earn his pay there. Uh, draft priority, free agent priority. They need one more good interior offensive lineman, and you're hoping that Scruggs is the answer in the middle with Shaq Mason there at right guard for another couple of years. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to point out to just – Dalton Schultz, we'd seen him starting to really take off. C.J. Stroud, that nice security blanket at tight end. We were wondering when Tank Dell returned, would that continue? It did not. With Tank Dell back, he had two catches for five yards. I mean, Schultz was just a, a ghost out there. They're, they barely used him. And I think Robert Woods being out, I think that hurt C.J. a little bit. You know, he's a good blocker, but he's also a guy he can trust to be where he needs to be as experience in this system. So I think Robert Woods being out – that was definitely a factor in this and the batted balls all day. CJ's got to get his arms around that. There were a lot of opportunities where he was just getting passes knocked down. Good for Noah Brown, but bad for the Texans when Noah Brown's your most prominent receiver. And it's not as if he went for a buck and a quarter, right? He had three catches for 57 yards, which for a number three, number four wide receiver is nice. But Nico Collins was largely taken out of the game. Tank Dell, a, a very quiet game. Uh, John Mechie barely got on the field. I think he had seven snaps, something like that. So uh, probably reality smacking the Texans and anyone who cares or follows them uh, in the face a bit, right? Three and three and visions of sugar plums and a, a run at the division, dancing in heads. Well, Jacksonville's now six and two. The Texans are three and four, having lost to what was seemingly the worst team in the NFL, the Bears will continue to make uh, a run at that. Uh, so it's going to still be kind of fits and starts. And the run game thing, what is that balance? You know, and if they do fade from contention, does it impact it? Want to establish that mentality, finding out who can bow up in the run game and, and where's the strength side of the offensive line? Because for the purposes of winning that game, and obviously if you win it, you're four and three and you're in that cluster of teams and the race for three wild card spots at least. And with one of the easiest schedules on paper uh, the rest of the way in the NFL, a byproduct of the season that they had last year. Uh, but you're going to try to force the run when you pretty much can't run, right? You're not controlling the clock. You're not controlling the ball. You're having these short possessions, and it was just a clunker. They're going to happen. Look at what the Kansas City Chiefs did Denver Sunday. Right? These things can happen to elite offenses. The Texans aren't anywhere close to that, but that it was at Carolina, a chance for the Texans to be over 500 for the first time since what would have felt like the Bush administration. Pick your Bush. Um, so three and four before they finish up uh, against the NFC South. And, uh, you know, if you want to cling to hope that, that Jacksonville hits a bump in the road or, you know, a major injury or two upsets their apple cart by right? that game in Jacksonville at NRG with a chance to sweep the series, um, uh, what three game, three games from now. Uh, but at least D'Amico should have uh, zero difficulty uh, getting the troops attention at practice. Uh, because if they, if they needed humble pie, it was crammed down their throat Sunday. I wish we could dig into that a little further because I do have questions about because there were so many good statements after the game. Uh, or maybe not good statements, but interesting statements. Uh, kind of D'Amico talking about how the team deals with success and kind of learning how to deal with success. And Stroud mentioning the plays and the play calling, maybe needing to be more explosive. I wish we could dig into that, but we do need to get to the defense, which was actually the the better part of this game. They hold. Carolina to 15 points and if you told me before this game Carolina gets hold of 15 points and the Texans who came in with nine sacks all year get six against Bryce Young I'd say oh great easy win uh, but that's not how it turned out so I guess my question is and obviously the bend but don't break uh, defense bent too far on that final drive so how much of this is on the defense from this loss yeah it's <laughs> Look, the offense sucked. So that's to me where primary blame goes. But in the end, and this phrase that Bill O'Brien used nauseatingly much, but other coaches will throw it in complimentary football, the defense had the chance to put it away. And we saw this movie before. It was called the Atlanta Falcons game, where the defense was very good for the balance of the game and then curled up and died 
when it was a chance to put it away. I mean, it's not as if Carolina took over the ball at midfield and manipulated into field goal range. Right? They went 80 yards starting inside their own 10 with the Bryce Young-led offense. You had a third and 12. Then they get that to fourth and two and convert a fourth down. Uh, then Tavier Thomas, whether trying to be a hero or just too anxious, you know, the penalties to turn a 38 yard field goal, not an automatic for a guy who missed an extra point earlier in the game into a virtual automatic 23 yard chip shot to win the game. So, uh, you know, if the, if the defense wasn't super model, beautiful, uh, for three and a half quarters, it was really pretty. And then this big giant oozing zit surfaced late in the fourth quarter and it just wrecked the whole dream. Yeah, I mean, I think the defense, they did a pretty good job forcing field goals, not giving up a bunch of touchdowns. As we look at them now, before the season, we were saying, could they sneak into the top 10? They're sixth in points against per game at 18.3. So offense is 20th point scored per game at 21.1. So you can't really complain about the defense. At the end of the game, it was just a lot of, they were trying to blitz a little bit. Bryce was being smart, just checking down to his running back over and over and over again, and they just kept picking up yardage that way. So that was disappointing. It'd be nice to see you know, Will Anderson get some more sacks. I know one was negated there because of a penalty, and, and that was the other thing, guys. The penalties really hurt them. They, what, they have 10, and I think to maybe like two or three, for the Panthers, so I agree. And that a delay hurt. of game to take you out of a field goal opportunity. I that mean, killed on. him, Charlie. That killed him because I it, that play got stopped, and it looked like it was going to be a, a completion for a first down. But instead, you get the penalty; it backs you up, and then you're out of field goal range. You have to punt. That really killed him. And I felt like from the jump that the the refs were really going to call everything like right by the letter of the law against the Texans. It, it felt like they had a bit of a rooting interest uh, against the Texans in that game. It just seemed that way from jump, and that happens sometimes when you come in as a favorite, and if if, if you're not playing well, they're they're going to call things against you on the road. So that really hurt him as well. I. I'm not really worried about the defense. They, they played well. It's just, you know, CJ's completion percentage now it's, of qualified guys, it's about fourth worst in the NFL at about 60%. So they got to get going. They got to take some more shots down the field. I agree with CJ there. And it feels like Bobby Slowick didn't do a lot of favors for him in the bye week. When we talked last week about one of the chief concerns going into this game was it, it seemed almost a little too obvious that the preponderance of the matchups favored the Texans. And we all got the reminder that the Texans at this point probably shouldn't be a road favorite against anybody, uh, at least an, an NFL opponent. It's always tough to assess this on a loss, but uh, I, give me your player of the game for this. Well, I'm completely disqualifying the offense. Mm -hmm. uh, you score only 13 points, you muster 229 yards, and you lose. Uh, against an 0-6 team that had yielded 84 points over its last two games. So on the D, I'm not going with the punter, though you arguably could. Uh, Malik Collins, who uh, you know is a, a load on the inside. I mean, you know, you're not Reggie White in there or anything, but anytime an interior defensive lineman is in on seven tackles, right, where his job's to occupy blockers, free things up for the linebackers, but he doesn't play three quarters of the snaps because he's not thought of as a pass rusher. Well, he had a two sack game as a part of a three-quarterback hit game. Uh, so I will go with uh, Malik Collins as, as my Texans player of the game. Yeah, I'll go with Jonathan Gernard. I thought he had a good game. He, you know, he got some pressure in there and some sacks as well. I, I would like to point out, not one thing costs you a game, but the fumble by Beck, you were right there in there, you know, in field goal range. And the defense, you know, gets stout, holds them, and they have to kick the field goal right there. They can't pick up the first down. And then you lose by less than three points. I mean, that that you could argue that was the game. Uh, Charlie, you, men you mentioned not making a punter uh, your player of the game. I'm I don't normally pick a player of the game, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to say Camp Johnson just because I mean, that dude is a, a legit weapon to be able to punt from your one yard line and to plant it within the 10 uh, on the opposing side is is super, super important. Uh, they were really able to help. Uh, you know, kind of control uh, the field, uh, you know, being able to keep from being backed up. And when they were to get out of that corner, 
uh, offense just couldn't uh, convert that on their end, but uh, that was not due to Cam Johnson. That that dude is a legit weapon for them, and I think going forward, uh, you know, as they start cleaning up some some of these other things like play calling and kind of performances, and uh, I I think he could be a real difference maker on this team if he's not already. That's going to be it for Texans on Tap. Uh, we're going to do an early look at Buck. Bucks Texans in tomorrow's episode. And as always, you can listen to that early on podcast. So go give us a follow on your favorite podcast app. And if you're watching on YouTube, those links are in the description. Thanks for listening. As always, go Texans. Texans.